Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining our panel, Accelerating Cutting Edge Digital Transformation. Uh, my name is Ari Banerjee and I'm with NetFracker Technology. I'm delighted that some of NetFracker's esteemed customers could join me in this panel today and share their valuable insights with the audience. So before we start our discussion, let me quickly introduce the panelists. Kim Larson, CTIO, T-Mobile Netherlands, Carlos Longeri, CFO, Grupo GTD, Daniel Zaglinski, CIO, Grupo GTD. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining me in this panel. So we have two operators from two different countries, both focused on expansion. Selecting and deploying a cutting edge, future-proof IT stack was the backbone of the digital transformation strategy, and we'll hear from them. Uh, both TMNL and Grupo GTD have made bold moves, not only just from an expansion perspective, but also from design and execution standpoint. They have reinvented themselves across all parts of the business and transition uh, to a more digital native agile model with emphasis on innovation and on new capabilities. So Kim, first question for, for you. Now T-Mobile Netherlands have gone through a, a growth spur. Uh, you guys have more three networks, three companies to accelerate growth in the, in the Dutch market. We all know this very well, that these kind of consolidation transformation projects, if not handled correctly, can disrupt ongoing operations and ultimately impact customer experience. So Kim, I have a, I have a two part question for you. First, how did TMNL handle such an ambitious growth plan? And second, how did you manage to tackle such a complicated transformation project with a full agile approach? First of all, you need, you need to have the right people. You need to have the right mindset. Uh, but it's also very important that you, you have a very, very clear, razor-sharp view on your architecture and what needs to be in place in order to almost get acquisitions into a kind of production factory way of working, right? And if we go back to 2018, we made certain decisions that we implemented in 2019, where we started our integration with uh, Tele2. Um, we, we were at a stage where we were almost 100% uh, agile in our operating model, our development model, which, which I think is, is an absolute essential requirement uh, for, for doing anything in, in a modern IT environment, in a modern world. Um, and, and I think in second, we had a very, very clear roadmap of how we wanted to cloudify our our service platforms and production platforms. And very clearly, we also had a very, very, let's say a very accurate view on what did we want as our cornerstone for integrating Tele2 and also subsequently um, Symbol, which we acquired later, which was again a, a million plus uh, customers. So having those enablers in place a, a very sharp sourcing model that allows you also to be not only economically efficient, but also actually increasing your productivity as you go along. While I think we have we have done amazingly over the last three years. So last year, we, we basically migrated uh, 1.2 million mobile customers from Tele2 onto our, what we call the Magenta stack, which is our core stack. So very early on, we, we, we said, no, we, we will not build up a separate stack or operate a separate stack for our new customer. We want to keep the brand, but we basically want to, to piggyback on what we already have and then paint the front end in, in, in the Tele2 brand and Tele2 color. But everything else actually from a business logic perspective stays pretty much the same. Uh, so, so that has been very instrumental and very important in our journey. So being... Agile, not just in words and PowerPoints, but really agile in your organization, having a very agile development mindset in the IT uh, organization is super important. Having very clear arrangements with your suppliers. So we work very closely with, with, with you guys, Netcracker, uh, also with, with, uh, with Artis and, and, and some others. And, and having very clear arrangements in place with them, also how you're going to take this journey together as partners are super essential. So we are at a place now where we, we will have ended our Tele2 migration by the end of this year. We will have shut, we actually already in the process of shutting down most of the platforms on the, on the legacy Tele2. And by that, of course, reaping the, the efficiencies and synergies uh, that, uh, that you would expect after such a, 
and acquisition and then the, the, the post-merger integration. Thank you, Kim. Um, so NetCracker obviously is very proud to be part of this transformation journey of T-Mobile Netherlands. Um, our cloud native VSS deployed on a public cloud AWS. Uh, obviously that's part of TMNL's plan to roll out your cloud-centric state-of-the-art IT architecture. Correct. Can you elaborate a little bit on your overall business objective for cloud adoption and what role vendors such as NetCracker play in that journey? So I think first to be successful in, in cloudifying your IT landscape, often I think at least our approach has been very successful in our opinion, is that you lift and shift. So you take your, your current environment, you lift it and put it in the cloud. That's the first step. Um, and then once you are there, either in public cloud or whatever kind of cloud environment you are, you start the journey of going towards cloud native, right? And then you start your cloud native journey, right? And if I, if I look uh, particularly at NetCracker, I mean, first of all, you always ha you also have a razor sharp roadmap in the steps that you, you're going to take with your, your solution, right? We have your, your product lifecycle management uh, uh, system, right? We have your order catalog and all these kind of things. And we now are starting from, from being cloudified to also make the next transition, the next step into a cloud native environment. And we really uh, are, are looking forward to that. So I think what I look for in my IT partners is that they first of all have a clear roadmap. They, they know what they're talking about. They, I mean, not just nice PowerPoint presentation, but really also are a development partner in our everyday operating life. Um, that we see that as as we implement new releases, that these releases are stable, and if there is some something going wrong, very quickly we can take action. That's always been the case uh, with NetCracker, right? And that, that that gives a lot of confidence also in that if something would not go right, it is immediately addressed and immediately solved. Thank you, Kim. And we'll I'll get back to you, but before and thank you so much for your responses. Uh, let me uh, steer my direction towards Grupo. So uh, for Grupo GTD is a multi-service operator. You, you guys have expanded your operation from Chile to a number of other countries in the Latin American and European markets, in Spain, in Ecuador, and a bunch of other countries. Um, obviously, from a small private company um, to becoming a global player, Grupo GTD has come a long way, and you're not stopping here, right? I mean, there's a lot of stuff that you guys are doing. Um, so, Carlos, um, why don't I start with you? Um, can you please tell us about Grupo GDD's evolution in the past few years? And what are the company's strategic objectives as you look ahead um, in the next three to five years? Okay, thank you, Ari. Uh, see, GDD is, uh, is basically a company that provides fiber connectivity and IT services to our clients, both in the B2B and B2C uh, business. We don't do we don't do mobile, okay? But mobile companies are a big client for us. Uh, we provide a lot of uh, fiber to the tower for them. And in the last ten years, we have been growing uh, at an annual compound rate of around ten percent. So, around twenty five percent of our revenue is coming from our IT offer, uh, meaning data centers, multi cloud, whatever, whatever we we, we do service to our client. And we have built a regional set of uh, tier three data centers, uh, building new data centers in Colombia, Peru, and Chile. Uh, that is that has allowed us to create a regional uh, network that is very appreciated by our clients. Uh, regarding our strategic objectives for the next five years, well, uh, basically we want to double the value of our company. Our main focus will still be infrastructure, meaning fiber networks and and data centers and uh, our second objective will be to grow quite uh, a lot on on the it world uh, uh we are doing a lot of, uh, of services right now on digital transformation ourselves we call digital transformation for our clients everything that has to do with iot blockchain ai uh, ml whatever uh, and we also do a lot of cyber security so um in order to achieve this that I'm telling you, uh, in the last uh, five years, we have to do a lot of changes in our systems. Uh, we basically have to replace the ERP, the VSS, OSS, our field service serve software, the GIS, our orchestration manager. So, I mean, it has been quite, um, I mean, a lot of work and, and very intensive. 
And in that order, Netcracker has been a great par partner for us. Thank you. Uh, Daniel, so, you know, Carlos just talked about Netcracker being a long-term partner of Grupo GDD, and, you know, obviously you are using our full stack solution. Um, if you can talk a little bit about the three criteria that were important in your IT selection process and, and over the years, how has the relationship with NetTracker progressed in the last few years? For sure. Well, thank you very much for inviting us to this panel. Um, as Carlos mentioned, we had this strategic challenge to double the value of the company by 2025. And uh, that uh, calculation was done more or less by 2018. So we needed to run, we needed to run very quickly. All of this growth was going to be done without missing what we consider our closest or more, more embedded value, which is to deliver the best customer experience for our clients. Uh, this all implied to homologate and standardize a bunch of processes across the organization. We came from a past in which every company, every segment was in a way a more or less independent with their own systems, their own way of doing these uh, processes, etc. So uh, the best thing was to standardize everything using technological tools to support all of the macro processes. So, um, Looking for those uh, for those tools, we started selecting uh, together with uh, the help of Garner and, and McKinsey three competitors, uh, world class competitors in the full stack software for uh, telecoms or CSPs. Then we selected the standard against uh, which they were going to be measured, and that was TN forums, ETOM, and TAM. And so uh, after the evaluation, we achieved more or less a 98 to 99% compliance of the three uh, participants. And we also needed a software that would scale with us without needing further uh, investments. And with little twitches, we could adapt to different segments and to different also markets. Because as Carlos mentioned, we have IT, we have security, so it's not everything telecom, even though we are a telecom company by, by nature. So um, finally, this company that we selected, of course, was Netcracker, would bring for us best practices, uh, but also would respect cultural differences, which we have a lot because we operate in many countries with different groups and uh, different markets. And even though, uh, it's not a big, a huge company such as the big ones in the industry. We have a great variety of customers that need to be served with the highest standards. And the software allow us to do that. I would say we have a symbiotic relationship between the software and our processes in which they both enrich from each other. And particularly now, because we need to move and we need to move fast. Uh, we need to uh, uh, adapt ourselves to digitally native customers and competitors who change faster than we do. So we need to be there before they arrive so that we can offer the solutions that they need. And to offer the solutions mean to be prepared to be able to be enabled by technology to do that. Uh, we also have the, this other aspect that Gartner calls the digital dragons, which are these big companies, Amazon, Apple, um, Alibaba, that could enter your industry at any moment in time and completely disrupt it. So having a flexible and strategically uh, thought software working closely with the provider was for us critical. So those were basically the major criteria used and why Netcracker was our selection. And I think it was proved to be right. And we have already implemented this in the B2B market in the, re in the central region. We are just about a month to go live with the B2B in the south. And we, have, we are in the middle of implementing B2C. And then we will roll roll it out in different companies, different segments as well. 
Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you for, um, for these valuable insights um, and taking the time to talk to us.